This is Tomara's recycling plant. It shuts down only for maintenance and holidays. Otherwise, it runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We receive around 120 tons of scrap daily. For plant manager Marcelo Shuka, recycling is more than a job, it's a mission. If this can were not recycled today, it would take thousands of years to decompose. So we'd have 120 tons of scrap daily, just from here, spread all over the country. That happens today with other materials that don't have a market for recycling. Aluminium has a market because it's the miracle metal. It's roughly one-third as dense as copper or steel, so it weighs much less. It resists corrosion, and it's easy to work. Only gold is more malleable. It's one of the most versatile metals. You find it in airplanes and rockets, telescopes and cars. Its lifespan, nearly indefinite. Two-thirds of all the aluminium ever produced is still in use. Much of it in cans. A quarter of a century ago, one kilogram of recycled aluminium made 42 cans. Today, 62 cans, a productivity jump of almost 50%. And 90% of a can survives recycling. You use about 7 tons of cans to make around 6.3 tons of metal. It's a violent process. The raw aluminium shreds into pieces the size of a potato chip, then onto a separator to remove all traces of other metals. Then the cans are sent pneumatically through those tubes to the stocking silos, where they will be taken and thrown into the furnace. Out of the silos, into the fire. Mixed with the cans is aluminium scrap from can factories. Natural gas heats the furnace to 780 degrees Celsius, one-tenth the surface temperature of the sun. Paint melts, metal fails. At last, the can's identity vanishes and a solid becomes a liquid. All of us who have been with the company for a while, we never get tired of seeing the metal tap. He has this magic glow. You look and you are hypnotized. To preserve its purity, the molten aluminium is skimmed like soup. A thin film of oxidized metal is removed to be remelted. The liquid aluminium isn't yet ready to change back into a can. Next stop, the processing plant. Novelis has the largest aluminium recycling plant in South America. It's the only plant in Brazil that can produce aluminium sheets for soda cans. The process begins with molten aluminium, turned into a giant block called an ingot. This single ingot weighs 15 tons about the weight of eight average cars. This plant processes the equivalent of 14 blocks per day, 5,300 blocks a year, 80,000 tons of aluminium. They look like ordinary hunks of metal, but they can take infinite forms. In weight, this amount of aluminium equals one Queen Mary. Eight Eiffel Towers, 450 Boeing 747s, 
and 4,640,000,000 soda cans. The most recycled object on the planet. The challenge? Making a half-ounce can from a 15-ton block. It happens with heat and pressure. Workers heat the ingot to 550 degrees centigrade to soften it for rolling. At the outset, it's about half a meter thick. They roll it like pastry dough up to 15 times. By the end, it's 90% thinner, about as thick as a video cassette. They trim the rough edges and catch the scraps to be remelted and recycled. After cooling, they roll the ingot again. Under enormous pressure, it flattens to two millimeters, about the thickness of a coin. Finally, coiled for shipping to a can factory. One coil may be three kilometers long and contain aluminium from more than a million recycled cans. Mrs. Macedo's can becomes a can once again. Not just this once, but over and over again during her lifetime and beyond. So you have an idea what a can like this means nowadays in Brazil. Everyone knows that today, this means money. Business launched Sao Paulo's green revolution. Now government is catching up. The city has planted 58,000 trees to help reduce pollution and added 2,000 square kilometers of green space. In 2003, Sao Paulo launched an urban agriculture program to help feed and employ the poor and recover blighted land. The city toughened vehicle inspections to reduce emissions by 30%. Yet the bottom line, not just good intentions, still drives Sao Paulo's green revolution. And there's a long way to go. Today, Sao Paulo is tapping hidden riches in unlikely places. From a crucible of change, a recycled river of liquid gold. Outside Sao Paulo stands a conundrum. This mill turns out a product crucial to the city's survival, 